first tornado warning up near Brady is right in here. The secondary circulation has kind of developed west of it along the same storm system, but a new appendage, a new area of rotation kind of building in. And so that right now is Fredonia and off toward just to the south of Fredonia. So with both of those, we're watching very keenly with the tornado warnings in effect. I'll do another storm track for you. I will say what's encouraging, and you may be able to see this as well, see how bright the wind speeds were right before it pushed out of McCulloch County and into Mason County. That shows me that the storm was quite a bit stronger prior to moving into our area. That said, don't want to mess around with this and they, it looks like we do still have the tornado warning continuing. There's been no change on that front, so we'll continue to stay with you as we look at that. Yep, no, no adjustments. Everything is status quo with the tornado warnings in effect for Mason County until 615 and until 630 for Lano County. I'm going to stop this. We'll go ahead and look most closely at, I think the second area of rotation is a little bit more... Um, ominous at this point than the first. So we're looking at Fredonia again. You saw some rotation earlier and just to the north and east of Fredonia, just to the north of Highway 71, right in here, there might be a little bit of rotation, something to continue to keep in your safe spot just to be on the safe side given the storms and the potential. RM 1222, keep in mind Highway 71, and then the original area of rotation of spin that we were watching would be somewhere near or north of Castell now. The purples that you're seeing, that's just an artifact of the radar because of the fact that the radar beam is actually quite a bit farther away from Lano and there's such an elevation difference. So ignore the purple part. We're looking at the reds and the greens as the most likely area of possible rotation. All right, so it looks like the tornado warning has been canceled from McCulloch and San Saba counties, but it continues for Mason County and Llano County. So if you get that north of Mason County, you've now been cleared, but Mason County as well as Llano County, County still continuing under the tornado warnings. Uh, so current time is 6.04. Mason County, you're under that tornado warning until 6.15. Llano County, you're under that tornado warning until 6.30. Please be in your safe spot. And of course in Llano, the storms not yet to you, but they are just now approaching the Valley Spring area, and they are definitely nasty, as you can see the tornado warning in effect there as the storm continues pushing off toward the south and east. Appendage number one, that's the area of rotation, which would now theoretically be in northwest Llano County. Appendage number two, right in here, just to the south of Pontotoc. So two separate areas of rotation now. Neither one of them, from what I'm looking at, overly indicative of a tornado, but I don't want to second guess the possibility that something could possibly make it in and, uh, and drop a tornado. So just to err on the side of caution, we're just going to roll with this. It does look like the hail core is dropping a little bit now with the storms. Uh, the original storm, this first one, it does look like it's weakened quarter size hail possible. The second storm that's kind of filling in and strengthening on the backside of it. Now that one still is showing some pretty good rotation with it. Uh, still only hail of about one inch in diameter now. So it's weakened from that standpoint, but it's still showing a good decent amount of low level rotation. And I've pushed this right in here and I'm gonna try to track for you the second area of circulation because I feel like the first one is not as strong as the second one. We'll go ahead and do a storm track for you. And I'm only gonna do a 30 minute track. Just, we'll try it. I'll see if I can encompass both portions of the storm. And we're gonna push it off toward the southeast at about 35 miles per hour. Okay, so this is gonna give you roughly some of the towns that may be in the line for the storm. And again, some of you may already have thunderstorms, but I'm really trying to key in on the area of rotation where it would be most likely that there might be a possible tornado. That's gonna be 615, right now is 606. So 615 for Fly Gap School, that's still in Mason County. Lano Airport at 624. Lano Municipal, again, the same thing, 624. Stoltz at about 629. Downtown Lano, about 633. 
in Llano City Park at about 635. So it's still a pretty rural area, a lot of territory that's just going to be ranch land out into northeastern Mason County and northwestern sections of Llano County. But eventually this is going to hit some pretty big populated areas like downtown Llano. And we hope that it doesn't intensify. But tornado warning is in effect. And yes, you are included if you are in downtown Llano. About 3,000 people within Llano County are within the tornado warned portion of the storm. I'm going to do a little wider view though for you because I know a lot of folks have been concerned, you know, what about what about me? How are the storms looking elsewhere? So the biggest thing that we're tracking is the tornado warning for a radar indicated possible tornado, but we're also seeing a couple of supercells that are moving in the vicinity of Waco. To our west, we have a dry line. To our north, we have a cold front. And those two boundaries are kind of converging on our area. Today, we made it up to 93 degrees. We saw a heat index value of 101 at five o'clock. This type of atmosphere is so conducive for explosive storms to possibly develop. And in this case, rotating storms as well. So the hail still looks like the worst of the hail might be now in Llano County, and it looks like only about quarter size. That's some good news. It has dropped down. That's definitely something important to note is that it looks like the hail has dropped down, and that is sometimes indicative of the storm itself weakening. Honestly, looking at the velocity here, it was really strong as it headed just north of Katemsi. And now that initial area of rotation is almost hard to discern. It would be right here where the arrow is. The secondary area of rotation would be somewhat close to Mason. Even that's kind of hard to pick out. And there may be a little bit something just to the northwest of Pontotoc. At this point, what I'm seeing is not screaming to me tornado on the ground, but it certainly is something where we'd be keeping an eye on potential of a possible tornado. The tornado warning, as mentioned, was canceled for McCulloch and San Saba counties to our north, continues for Mason County until 615. Right now it's 609 and continues for Llano County until 630. I operate under the idea of no news is good news. And thus far, I'm not seeing spotter reports of tornadoes. I'm not getting indication of damage happening this is a good thing. And the hail core having dropped down is also a good sign, but definitely still remain in your safe spot as a precaution given the situation that we're watching. So yet two different cells, both of them at this point still continue to show indications of hail that could be on the severe side of up to an inch in diameter. Nothing like what we were dealing with earlier where we were seeing indications of hail that could have been as large as baseball size that was up near Brady, farther north into McCulloch County. So definitely some improvement in that, uh, in that area. All right, so 610 is the time. Still watching the potential of possible tornado with the tornado warnings in effect. I'm gonna go ahead and strip this from the warnings and the sweeping radar, and we're gonna be left with the radar tracks. So for me, when I see blue, that's when I start getting a little worried. When I see purple, that's when I say, eh, not too impressed. And what I'm seeing over the last half hour or so is that the blue, which had me on guard for potential, we could have a tornado drop at any moment, now coming into purple and becoming less widespread. Now this latest pixel is showing some blue, so we may see some strengthening there. We'll look a little close, closer at that area. Uh, but in general, I was noticing that the area of rotation was becoming a bit less concerning and a little bit less impressive. But we'll go ahead and look at this area right in here, closest to uh, Llano County and near Castell. And it's a little challenging to look at this. Let's see if I can take a closer look with a different uh, vantage point looking at the velocity. And we'll go ahead and track that potential rotation. It's it's kind of a messy storm, to be honest with you, not a super well-defined, what we would call couplet that would be something where you would immediately say, oh, there's a tornado on the ground. Instead, yes, there is rotation, um, moderate to low rotation, um, still worth keeping in your safe spot just to be on the safe side. Uh, but thus far, the fact that we haven't had anything reported is really a good sign. Um, Castell, please be in your safe spot because this is the area of rotation would be just to your north. Valley Spring, Llano, 
please continue to be mindful of the fact that there might be a possible tornado that could develop, although currently things are not looking terribly concerning. I'll go ahead and go back to the actual radar reflectivity and we'll see if we can pinpoint anything more specific. So we're watching as this, what had been initially just one large supercell, we've almost seen a storm split, if you will. See right how this area down near Castell is kind of its own little beast that has developed to the south of the two original areas of rotation. So here's rotation area number one right here over the white arrow. Rotation number two had been over Fredonia. It's basically pushed right in here. So those two areas which are potentially spots where we would want to look for maybe seeing a possible tornado develop. And then farther to the south, we've watched a separate storm kind of split off and build over the Castell area. So that's basically the lay of the land as we continue watching the potential of Perhaps an isolated tornado dropping down. Definitely nasty storms, a lot of lightning, about 323 lightning strikes with this. And also the potential of some hail. I'll go back to the hail report here. And it looks like the hail has gone a little bit stronger, a little bit of an uptick in Northwest Lano County. This is going to be to the west of Valley Spring. And it looks like Potentially, we've got hail that could be approaching golf ball size again. Um, this shows walnut hail, but right in this pixel of blue, that could potentially be some hail up to about golf ball sized. So um, damaging hail is never a good thing. This is going to be west of Valley Spring, south of Highway 71. To zoom in a little bit more closely, we're looking at County Road 409. So this is going to be west of Highway, or west of Highway 71 in Valley Spring south of Valley, southwest of Valley Spring and east of County Road 405. This is the area right in here where there could potentially be some hail up to about golf ball size. Still watching to see if there's any indication of a tornado actually on the ground. But at this point, I'm just seeing there's rotation. It's a little bit broader than it had been. Um, right now, our radar is showing, again, this one little hail core as being probably the worst part of the two storms in terms of hail itself. Go back a little bit more. We'll take a closer look at the radar again and show you the velocities. Again, here's the tornado warnings. The one from Mason County is going to expire in about half a minute. And then the one for Lano County will continue on. That's in effect until 6.30. So our current time right now is 6.14. In just a moment, the Mason County portion of the tornado warning will likely be allowed to expire. And then a new severe thunderstorm warning will probably replace it for northeastern sections of Mason County. And at this point, we're still just watching the storm that is about 16 miles northwest of Lano right now that is showing potential for possible rotation that could turn into a tornado. This is all radar indicated at this point. Still pushing to the southeast at about 30 miles per hour. Okay, so here we have Mason County. You are cleared of the tornado warning. We made it through. Still a nasty storm. There's a severe thunderstorm warning for you. You're not going to see anything worse than what already pushed through. Lano County, we're now going to focus in on you because you are under the tornado warning until 630 at least. And what we're watching here is the original storm with the original rotation plus a new storm that kind of developed all in a hurry over Castell. So sometimes interactions between storms can create interesting results. So certainly we'll keep a close tab on this, but it's good news that the Mason County storm appears to have come and gone without actually dropping a tornado. And in fact, the hail reports were generally up to the north into McCulloch County in the Brady area. And it looked like the storm were Storms were a little bit more, uh, they behaved a bit more, if you will, up into northeastern sections of Mason County. Still a good amount of lightning, though, over 300 lightning strikes. I'll go back to the velocity, and we'll take a look at where the most likely area of rotation could be. Again, emphasizing that thus far, I have not seen anything nearly as strong as the rotation that was first evidence out near Brady and McCulloch County when the original tornado warning came out, just about 5, 515 or so. So here we are, tornado warning. Hail size has dropped 
down from two inches in diameter to just one inch in diameter. So that's an indication that the storm is weakening. And we're watching this was the area of rotation is very broad and now as opposed to tight rotation. But here's where you have the winds circulating in a very broad fashion. This is just going to be to the east of Castell and to the west of Llano. Something that we're watching but does not scream to me at this point. Tornado, again, we're keeping radar indicated as basically what we're looking at. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I will circle for you the most likely area of circulation right in here. West of Llano, northeast of Castell, not super well-defined, not extremely strong. In fact, I'll query for you some of the winds. We're looking at 30 miles per hour there, 15, and nothing as far as really strong winds compared to, I was showing you the same type of thing earlier and we were looking at 60 to 70 mile per hour potential winds when this storm was a little bit heftier. So not as strong, still keeping tabs on possibility of maybe seeing the, the circulation tighten up a little bit. Also watching some spin over Castell in that area. Uh, Ranch Road 152, here's Highway 29. Here's the Llano-Mason County line. So these are areas where, yes, I want you to get, continue to stay indoors to be on the safe side. But at this point, I'm not looking at anything overly concerning showing up on radar. I'm not getting reports from any weather spotters at this point either, which is always a good point, a good indication. And I'm checking the latest parameters on these storms. One inch diameter hail seems to be the max. The storm moving to the east at about 20 miles per hour east southeast. And it does appear that the strongest portion of the storm would be just to the east of Castell making its way toward Llano. I'll go ahead and put it again into the regular radar view and then I'll do a storm track for you. So even if we don't end up getting a tornado out of this, oh, we're showing you the hail core. Uh, again, the hail most likely just to the south of Valley Spring, maybe some smaller hail over Castell. Now let me go back to the other uh, map with the radar showing the storms. And what I'm watching is this storm to the north, which is the one that prompted the tornado warning, and this new storm to the south over Castell. These storms are coming together. They're merging. And sometimes when we get cell mergers, one storm could basically steal the other storm thunder, if you will, and become the dominant one. So if anything, based on what I'm looking at, it wouldn't surprise me if this Castell storm ends up saying, hey, I'm going to take all this moisture and instability and I'm going to become the big guy. And this other one might get cut off in terms of its fuel to continue to intensify. So that would be the next thing that I would be watching for. It's 619 right now. We've been wall to wall on coverage with a tornado warning, which originally was over McCulloch and Mason counties. Now it is over Llano County. At this point, I'm pleased to say that I don't think there's probably a tornado in progress. We have not heard any reports from spotters, but there is some rotation. And at times with a situation like this, especially when we have a cell merger, which is happening right now, sometimes there can be a quick, rapid intensification and we can see things go downhill in a hurry. So continue if you're in Llano County. If you are in Llano, the storms are bearing down on you. I'll go ahead and do a new storm track. We'll take the leading edge of these storms, pushing off toward the south and east and I think that at this point we're probably looking at gusty winds and hail as the main factors with this as opposed to it's not looking as impressive in terms of tornado threat in my opinion. All right so here are some towns and some times. Current time is 620. The tornado warning is in effect for another 10 minutes over Llano County so continue to stay indoors. Remain vigilant just in case something unexpected does pop up. Tau out at Lake Buchanan, 621. Llano Airport, 629. Llano Downtown, 633. Lake Buchanan, about 635. Black Rock Park, about 643. Buchanan Dam at about 651. And that's just taking the leading edge of the storms, not necessarily taking into consideration the exact locations for where the rotation is. But I'll show you where our radar scope is showing potential for rotation. And it would be kind of broad rotation right in here, northeast of Castell, west of Llano, right in here would be the spin that is currently the area of most concern. 
And as of yet, the National Weather Service is saying we're going to continue the tornado warning. This is as of 618, their latest update saying continue the tornado warning, continue with radar indicated. However, we're not hearing of reports of a tornado on the ground. So this is fantastic news. We'll continue to just keep a close eye on it. As I mentioned earlier, yes, it's a tornado warning, but no, the wind speeds are nothing like they were evidenced earlier. I'm going to go ahead and query for you. This is very weak. We may be dealing with, this is like 30 mile per hour wind speeds here. So not terribly convincing that we're dealing with an imminent tornado threat, uh, but as is protocol, Tornado warning is a tornado warning. We respect them. So we're going to continue to stay here. The storm is just about to you in Lano. It's quickly going to envelop you. We've got a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder, potential for that hail. Valley Spring, you're seeing the heaviest of the storms push over you and continue to watch. It looks like the emergency managers in Lano County have just activated the storm warning sirens. Just so you know, the warning sirens do not mean there is a tornado actively happening. They're a heads up for you, especially for outdoor purposes, to tell people to get inside and get to safety because there could be a possible tornado. So tornado warning sirens are going to be sounding in Lano County. That's from the emergency manager there. Continue to watch as the storm is is really honestly weakening. I just checked the latest update. Hail core may be going up a little bit, but the rotation appears to be diminishing with this storm. And the storm farther to the north and west is also showing signs of diminishing. So let's talk about potentially, I'm hopeful that they're gonna let this tornado warning expire at 6.30. Now, based on the latest look, I think that the cell merger between the storm now down near Castell, and then the storm kind of pushing in toward Lano. The two of them colliding has basically merged them into kind of a messy mode, if you will. Less of a supercell thunderstorm and more of a mushy little cluster of storms, which is good from the standpoint of tornadoes and trying to not have any issues with those. I'll go ahead and put the radar backups or the velocity backup so you can kind of see what we're looking at. And very, very clear. The loop, we're going to start back here an hour ago. You can see how strong this was, and then it pushed off toward the east, and now we're very broad with our rotation. It has significantly weakened, and no longer am I seeing any type of this close-knit, tight circulation. Certainly, these are strong, severe storms, but no longer am I really concerned about an imminent tornado coming out of this particular portion of the storm. But hail potential still with us and the storms are still bringing dangerous lightning and we do still technically have the tornado warning in effect. It's 625 right now. The tornado warning in effect for another five minutes and this does include you in Lano. The circulation as broad as it is, is just to the west of Atlanta right now. It's right in here. So we're talking Highway 29 and Highway 71 basically being the area of possible rotation. Highway 16, basically where Lano is, right in here, the weakest of the rotation, which is currently ongoing. So again, if you are hearing the storm sirens in Lano County, there is not a confirmed tornado on the ground. However, there are areas of severe weather that you are going to have to deal with. Let's talk about hail with this storm. It pulsed up a little bit. As we're seeing the hail core, most likely this is going to give us an indication. Here's Lano right here. As we take a jog west along Highway 29, just to the north of Highway 29, east of RM 2768, that's where there could be the largest of the hail based on what radar is indicating right now. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the hail size, right along walnut size and just around it. Yep, probably, I wouldn't be discounting the possibility of maybe seeing some ping pong ball sized hail within here. That'd be about an inch and a half in diameter. And and there's an outside chance that there could also be some golf ball sized hail coming out of that. All right, still waiting for word from the Weather Service on what they're going to do with respect to the tornado warning that's in Lano County. Still haven't seen anything come through. 
But the good news is that we haven't had a single report of a confirmed tornado. It's all been radar indicated thus far, and the radar indications have really started to weaken. The rotation that I've been tracking has not been as well defined, which is always a good sign. This is certainly a nasty storm, but is no longer looking like a classic supercell. Earlier, we were seeing a pretty good hook echo, and now with the two cells merging in, it's a lot less well-defined and a lot harder to even really detect where the most likely rotation would be, which is going to be right over Lano as we speak, and unlikely, in my opinion, to be dropping a tornado at this point. We'll go back to the velocity and show you a little more closely the progression of the potential rotation. And it would surprise me if the National Weather Service doesn't back off and make this a severe thunderstorm warning as opposed to a tornado warning. Um, but maybe they're seeing something that I am not. But we have been evidencing areas of rotation. Just right now, there's no really tight packing. There's a large, broad circulation over a Castell. And then right in here, it's very difficult to even discern. But just to the west of Lano, velocity showing that. Nothing that's convincing me at this point that we're going to be dealing with anything significant. Uh, Waiting to hear, again, we're three minutes away from the current expiration of the tornado warning for Lano County, and I suspect that it will probably be allowed to expire and a severe thunderstorm warning will probably replace it. While we wait to find out what the fate of this storm will be, I'm going to zoom out for you because I know many of you are probably watching and wondering what about Austin, what about other areas. Right now, this is the only storm in town, but note, we're starting to see new little pixels of storms trying to get going a little farther south, including in portions of northeast Gillespie County, southern sections of Lano County, northwest sections of Blanco County. None of these so far have really taken off, but if you're outside and you're looking and you see those towering cumulus clouds, those are the storms that are trying to build in the really hot, humid air. There's a dry line to our west, and there's a cold front that's pushing in from the north, and that's basically doing the squeeze play, giving us all that moisture all that instability for storms. Incidentally enough, today was a day where tornado potential was fairly low, but because of so much instability, it didn't take long before we saw a tornado warning issued. I'm just very pleased that at this point, we have not had a confirmation of any tornadoes, just really large hail. In general, we're watching this storm and then we've also got some storms to the north. They're well to the north, though. We're talking Gatesville toward Waco. And on the trajectory of those storms, they would maybe move toward Milam County in a couple of hours. But in between, I'm not seeing any new development thus far. So this likely through the evening will probably not be widespread severe thunderstorm activity for everyone, but there could be some isolated storms like the one that we're tracking right now that could be really bad. All right, it is now 629, and the National Weather Service has indeed opted to let the tornado warning expire, which I suspected. We're going to transition from tornado warning to severe thunderstorm warning. Boom, there it is, it's gone. And with that, let me introduce you to Walt Makaborski. Walt.